Netflix has seemingly broken the curse for live action anime with the huge success of One Piece. Now it tries its hands at another storied series, Yu Yu Hakusho. Honestly, as a surprise, there hasn't been a live action adaptation yet, because the series is not only over 30 years old, but it's so beloved in the world of anime. It's an anime that I haven't seen in quite a while, but it still holds a very special place in my heart as well, and one thing that I do vividly remember is the Dark Tournament arc, and this live action series definitely makes some unexpected changes to that arc, which is one of the most iconic in anime. Yet, it kind of works, and we're going to talk all about it. This is Randy from the Hasiverse, and we're talking about Yu Yu Hakusho, the Grand Review. Now, if you're not familiar with Yu Hakusho, here's a quick little synopsis. We have a boy named Yusuke Yurameshi, who is kind of a punk, but he's got a good heart, and he tries to save this young boy from basically getting killed, but kills himself in the process. Instead of dying, he gets a second chance at life, but he becomes a spirit detective, so he investigates these demons who cross the lines into the real human world. The thing about this series, this live action series, is that it's still only five episodes, which is much shorter than Cowboy Bebop and One Piece, which were at least eight episodes. That feels like a problem from the get-go. The thing you need to keep in mind is though, that this is a very loose adaptation. I haven't seen the anime in a while, but I'm just going to talk about it and explain how some of the changes are and basically give my take on the direction. Spoiler alert, if you have not seen the series, you might want to do that. Episode 1. We get that iconic intro of how Yurameshi died from Truck Crew. And he is saving this kid, which I feel was an interesting take how they decided to use the demon to basically influence the driver to run amok. And look, that CGI was great. I mean, it was brutal to watch, won't lie, but seeing Yusuke, uh, you know, get like trampled upon from that truck die like that oh, something but i will say the cgi is pretty impressive on that uh we do get to see the spirit world for a little bit as well uh, we get to see botan who's like the grim reaper the spirit guide of the spirit world and we also get to see koenma look we know koenma was a baby uh early on in the anime but he does grow older uh, i believe by the dark tournament arc this choice of just making him an adult or making him you know grown from the beginning you know is one that makes sense for this concept because look for someone who doesn't know the anime to see him start from a kid as a baby and talk just feels kind of weird so just kind of looking more in a holistic point of view basically for the ones who haven't seen read the manga this is this makes total sense but uh, yeah, overall, you know, we get good exposition here from Yurameshi and how he does feel about this whole situation. You know, he was real nonchalant about even coming back. You know, we get a good taste of the world building. We get to see the spirit world. We get the gist of what's going on uh, with these demons coming into the human world and, you know, causing problems. We also get a bit of the villains like Psycho. <gasps> basically wants to unleash the demons into the human world full stop. So what gets me is just how aware are most of the people of the demon world? Because when Terracune asks him basically why he's so hyped about this piece of land and Psycho says he wants this link between human and demon world, he just kind of brushes it off, like whatever. So it really just kind of questions to me, how much do people really know about it? I don't know. But we do get our first glimpses of the CGI, seeing the yokai and how it affects uh, Yurameshi's uh, schoolmate, uh, Kirino, which was terrifying and weird looking. But yeah, that CGI looked really good. So in episode two, Yurameshi continues his role as the spirit detective. And he has to first recover these three special items from these yokai who took them. See Kurama, and we get to see Ie. But yeah, they are two of the yokai who stole the items, and 
we get enough backstory from Kurama into why he decided to take this in the first place and falls pretty similar to the anime and the manga. He basically wants to save uh, his mother, but it's gonna come at the cost of his. We also get Kuwabara. We get more Kuwabara kind of do an investigation of his own, trying to see what is Yurameshi doing. Basically, he gets included into the whole team. The one thing that really gets me is like how Kuwabara was so hesitant to believe that there are yokai demons in this world and they're trying to stop him. Yet, this kid saw literally his boy die and now sees him up alive kicking all in the first episode and doesn't really give it a second thought. Doesn't that give a red flag? Because I know I would be like, yo, how are you alive right now? Let's go into episode three. And this kind of is like the end of, I guess, the spirit detective arc. And they go to see Genkai. Uh, and this is where they kind of learn to hone in their powers. So at this point, Yurameshi does have a spirit gun, but he needs to kind of fine tune it. And Kuwabar is just kind of joining in and just wants to help however he can. And this is where Genkai is kind of like showing your Meshi, look, you need to really focus and really want this. And your Meshi's like, hey, look, I'll figure out what I do. I'm good. I'm the strongest one there. Is. Yet we see Kuwabara sitting here working like night and day trying to figure this out. And he eventually does, and he gets his spirit sword, which you know, is a major player for him, especially in the Dark Torment arc. But that also lights a fire in Yurameshi. And I love that part. I really love how they decide to adapt this story, seeing how Yurameshi, you know, was real just chill about it all. It just kind of felt like I'm the man. I don't need to worry about anything. But he does have a sense of like, man, this guy's sitting here getting stronger. I need to keep up. Like, he finally learns that I do have a rival because look for the longest he didn't feel like he needed one he didn't feel like he had one I really appreciate that I think that was just something that was kind of unique and that felt like really like live action only kind of the way they decided to develop that their rivalry is basically what keeps them going our friendship baby now, this is also where we get our first glimpse into one of the iconic villains of the series, Toguro, and specifically younger Toguro. We learn of his relationship with Genkai, which is also based in the anime as well. You know, in the anime, it's a bit different, or in the manga too, I believe. Here, it's more of a student your kind of relationship but yeah like we don't really get to see much of the fight between Genkai and Toguro either which you know is kind of a bummer. Episodes 4 and 5 that the Dark Tournament arc. What perplexes me is just how they manage to adapt like 60-70 episodes of an anime into a two hour movie. But I digress. It's not ideal but I can understand the decision they wanted to make with this because this is a different kind of adaptation. Now, the Dark Tournament is a major, major tournament where the team Yurameshi, which consists of Yusuke Yurameshi, Uabar, EA, Kurama, and a mass fighter, they go into the demon world to fight some of the baddest demons, yokai, you would ever think. And they were specifically invited by younger Toguro because he basically wanted to find the strongest fighters and beat them. See if he could stack up against them. He was basically Saitama, you know? Going just full on dark mode, trying to create his own tournament to fight the strongest guys. What makes the dark tournament so different and so iconic is basically this dark tournament arc was really the first time where we see like the heroes really have everything stacked against them. I mean, they were going into the demon world where they had to fight these demons in their own building. You know, these demons wanted them dead, you know? And like, yeah, it's like the worst kind of home field advantage you can get. At this point, like Team Yurameshi, they weren't even friends. They were kind of coming together with this, with their own motives, but they had a common goal in mind. You're just trying to survive and do what you got to do. Never really seen that in a lot of shonen. Point. Like, not even Dragon Ball. The other thing, the stakes were just so high. 
because even with something like the martial arts tournament, it's just winning a silly tournament. Here it was much more, like they had to survive or like all the people they loved would die. So they really had incentive to survive. And it's just those like elements that really make the dark tournament so iconic and why people remember it so well. Now, like all the fights in the arc were terrific. We see how Yusuke takes it up a notch. We see how Kurama and EA step up their game. It's just really great to see like how they all face their demons. But at the end, they surpassed it and they overcame them to become better for it. This live action series is different because while still on a remote island, basically this really goes from like a genuine tournament to kind of like a, a secret underground Betty. You know, we get all of the main characters. They basically get one fight and it seems like it all kind of happened by accident. Uh, maybe with the exception of Toguro and Yurameshi, but they all happen to be the same fights that they all face in the anime. So, I mean, that was obviously structurally from a storytelling point of view accurate, but they don't face, they only face one person. Basically, Kurama versus Karasu, we get Hiei versus Gui, we get, we get Kuwabara versus older Toguro, and we get Yurameshi versus younger Toguro. Toguro, sorry. Basically, they do ixnay the whole power system, the power leveling. Uh, we don't really have that in this live action, which is probably for the best. The CGI in this series was well, great, especially for the fights. You know, we got to see Kurama in his final, ultimate, powerful form. You know, the deaths between these guys. Like, even the deaths were good. You know, it just amazes me how they did do this whole entire arc in, you know, just two hours. But, you know, when you see that it's not a one-to-one -one adaptation and more of a reimagining, it makes more sense. You look back, like, at how they altered these storylines. Like, Genkai, the whole training episode, episode three, seeing them set up Yurameshi's spirit way, then Kuwabara's spirit sword, you know, within that episode so they could use it in episodes four and five. And to kind of use Keiko's kidnapping to springboard this whole thing is just very interesting that they decided to go this route. The fun part is we still get some of the bells and whistles of the Dark Tournament arc that make it iconic, like Enkai's death, even though her death happens before or the Dark Tournament arc, it still propelled Yurameshi to like come stronger. We also see like Kurama and Hiei grow as well. You know, we get to see them really appreciate Yurameshi and Kuwabara. They all become friends at the end. Now I want to talk about the characters for a little bit. And Takumi Kitamura he is the one who is uh, playing the role of Yurameshi. It's a solid choice, and I think he did a solid enough job because he definitely used that acting probably chops from his uh, role in uh, Tokyo Revengers. We do see that unlikable at times, kind of punky kid. Uh, he's really feared amongst his peers in the anime, I mean, in this live action. And we do get to see his stubbornness and his overconfident, cocky kind of attitude. But yeah, the one like glaring thing is he's not really funny. Those lighter moments, we don't really see much of. Now we get to see Kubara, who's also a punk, just like Yusuke. But, you know, he's good-hearted as well. He is that self-proclaimed rival of Yusuke Yurameshi. Honestly... It felt like he was more of a little brother, especially in those early episodes. But it feels like in the live action, he was really like steps, notches below. I do love how we see him fall in love with Yukina, uh, like at first sight. I'm trying to think because we know Kuwabara is a big cat person. Does he even see or pick up a cat in the live action? Because I'm not remembering right now if he even does that. I think we did, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments. But then we get Kurama, like that cool, calm, collected yokai who's basically started the series wanting to save his mom, sacrificing his life to do so. That was pretty accurate. You know, not just his backstory, but his personality. And then we go to Hiei, who's that mysterious, standoffish, rogue yokai who 
basically wants to go his own way. And we see that here as well. You know, there's a reason why he's badass and one of the most strongest in anime. I guess the, really the one glaring thing I would have loved to see is him use that evil eye more. Um, we got to see a glimpse of it for sure. And then we have uh, younger Togoro. The younger Togoro is really the only one that matters in this whole series. His desire to become the strongest is basically there. You know, we see that. That's basically how the anime goes. He wanted to get stronger and he didn't want to age. His relationship with Genkai, we saw, as I mentioned earlier, it is different. But, you know, we get to see it. But I think he was adapted pretty well. And, you know, seeing his final form or his strongest form, you know, that CGI, it was a bit of rough patches. But, you know, we got to see a visualization of it. You know, when you see it in the anime, you're like, what the heck is this? The fact that they adapted it in a, you know, pretty reasonable format, that it's not as... Definitely impressive. You know, overall, a big thing I really do appreciate with Yu Hakusho is the CGI. I think that's a thing that, you know, I've been saying a lot of, you know, in this video so far. It's because it's true. But yeah, like Tokoro, I think, uh, you know, I think he did a pretty good job. But, you know, he could have been a bit more, maybe a bit more intense if that's possible. I think he adapted as well as he could. And then you look at Elder Togoro as well, you know, seeing him and his creepy, you know, ability to like change his body and things like, you know, seeing that was was pretty creepy, but, you know, seeing him perched on younger Togoro's shoulder, like, you know, seeing that live action was kind of weird to, to experience. But now, the thoughts. This is a great series for someone who has not seen or read the manga. You can come in here and you can pretty much get the bells and whistles and you'll get a different take but you won't even realize that the story is vastly different but you'll get a pretty cohesive story i mean i respect the different direction this kind of reimagining is good for someone who wants to see you know just a good story that looks pretty good overall especially in that like haunting supernatural way you know overall the acting was pretty solid like i mentioned talking about the characters but you know the villains did feel pretty forced at times uh, you know, kind of uninteresting, especially like Psycho and the billionaire. It seems like a lot of them just kind of showed up. We don't really get a lot of exposition. If there was more episodes to the series, maybe we could have gotten a bit more of that. Now, and this goes for some of the main characters too, like especially like someone like Genkai. We, I would have loved to have more Genkai. The only thing I can conceivably see of a reason why is because of the CGI. I feel like the CGI really went above and beyond uh, what I expected and what probably a lot of people expected. In a lot of ways, it out surpasses even the One Piece. I guess the question is, if we took away some of the CGI, flesh out more of the character's stories and backstory, would it be worth the trade-off? I think they could have benefited from that. If that meant having more episodes, you know, and kind of like filling off uh, some of that CGI, I would take it any day of the week. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. The future of this series. Now, the first season adapted a lot of this anime. There's only two arcs now. We got Chapter Block, we got The Three Kings. Uh, I don't remember them as vividly. I do just remember how big they get, especially The Three Kings, but like even with Chapter Black in particular, you know, we get that like real deep kind of like philosophical look at what it is to become a spirit detective. And you get Sensui, who, you know, really kind of turns Yusuke's world upside down. We see the Three Kings arc, we see how major implications it takes into the world, not just the human world, but of the spirit world and the demon world with Ryzen. And look, while Sensui and Ryzen are not as iconic as Toguro, they are powerful. They are very big villains in Yu Hakusho. You know, I think they really need to do justice in making these two arcs separate. They should be a season apiece, but more likely we'll probably get these two mashed up into one season. I would love to see, you know, a nice five episode 
a season for Chapter Black and for Three Kings, just because of the major implications it has. And look, we get to see Yusuke Yurameshi as a demon as well in the anime, so, you know, we're gonna see that, you know, if we get another season. We need to really flesh out these two arts in particular. A deeper dive would do it justice, especially with what they did to the Dark Tournament art. Because while I'm not exactly thrilled with it, I accept it, and I'm not really as upset as I thought I would be. I mean, if they can find a creative way, like they kind of did here in the first season, I'm for it. But I would definitely stress to them, hey, let's keep these two arcs separate and make them a season piece. You get more, more flushing. Who doesn't like a good flushing out, right? I want to thank you guys for hearing me talk a bit about this Yu Hakusho review and look if you like this and you want to see more of what i got definitely click that platypus it should be there 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 to subscribe i would really appreciate it please like this video um, as well if you loved what you saw and look don't forget to have a great night a great morning a great day wherever it is wherever you are don't forget to stay nerdiest